We got a question here from Jessica. So Jessica asks, how do you prevent following your to-do list and time blocks from feeling like you are just going through the motions? I think this deserves an elaboration. Let's look at Jessica's elaboration. She goes on to say, I enjoy a lot of the planning and visioning that is part of the processes you've described, but I find that when it comes to executing, I don't feel very engaged in the things I'm doing, especially for work. I simply feel like I'm doing things that I have to do rather than I want to do, which makes me dread work and feel like I'm forcing myself to do it. The locus of control feels outside of myself. All right, well, there's a couple ways at this, Jessica. Let me start with the curmudgeon way. The curmudgeonly response here is, that's the definition of work. Work is the application of force against something that's otherwise at rest, if we're going to use a real technical, physical, physics approach here. But if we want to apply that a little bit more abstractly to the world of work, is that this is what, in some sense, money is being exchanged in, in, in exchange. You are being given money in exchange for your time and energy being dedicated to moving the proverbial thing that is otherwise at rest. It's, it's hard. It's not always what you want to do. And so you will, would want to be ha careful or wary of this trap, what I would call the inspiration trap, which is the trap of, if I don't feel like doing this right now, like I don't have a, a sense of inspiration for the actual activity I'm about to do, then it's a problem. That's a big trap. I wrote a lot about that in my, my book, So Good They Can't Ignore You. It can paralyze you. It can rack you with indecision. It can cause rapid and excessive career shifts as you try to seek an inspirational nirvana that doesn't exist, a state in which the only things you're doing are things that you feel motivated to do in the moment. All right, so that's the curmudgeonly response. There's a non-curmudgeonly response that's also rele relevant here because if you really are feeling demotivated by work, beyond just the, oh wait, work is hard reaction that we all have, the way often to gain back that motivation is first of all, career capital, Autonomy is the dream job elixir, feeling like you have control over what you work on, when you work on, and how you do it is a huge boon to motivation. And to gain autonomy, you need career capital. So if the, the real issue here is that like you really don't have enough control, like, like the work is, is really dreary and really prescriptive, and, and it's not just, well, work is hard, you got to do it. You just, I really don't like this. You need more autonomy. Autonomy is valuable. Everyone wants autonomy. How do you get it? You have to have something to offer in return. So your response should be not, woe is me. Your response should not be, well, maybe there's another job that they'll just give me more autonomy for free. It should instead be, how do I get the career capital I need to change in for exchange for autonomy as quickly as possible? And that means building rare and valuable skills in an unambiguously demonstrable fashion as fast as possible. And that means deliberate practice. Here's what's important in my current job. This will get me to the next level. I'm going to stretch myself past where I'm comfortable, systematically and repeatedly become so good I can't be ignored. Boom, next level, more autonomy. Skills translate to autonomy. Skills translate to autonomy. So that's one response I would give you. Two, another way to gain back that, that efficacy that can help stave off this demotivation is lifestyle-centric career planning. Here is what I want my life to be like. like what, what it's actually like, what the days are like. Uh, how, how much work I do or don't do, the character of that work, what's going on in my, my life outside of work, my, my fitness, my philosophical or theological life, literally the setting in which I live. You, you, you get this lifestyle, fully featured vision, right, inside your imagination. And once you're really sold on that, you're really sold on this lifestyle, you say, okay, what are the different paths I have to get there? And there might be many, but let me see one that makes sense and begin executing down that path. If you're doing work that in the moment feels kind of boring and like you don't have much control over it, but you know it's in service of a plan that's going to get you to A, which will get you to B, which will get you to C, which will get you to more or less this lifestyle that you're imagining, you don't mind doing that work. Just like when you are really sold on the vision of being in better shape, the, the physical discomfort and monotony of lifting a weight is very tolerable. Because that weight is part of a set you're doing, which is part of a routine you're doing, which is part of a larger exercise plan that's going to get you in better shape. So let's put together all those pieces. The curmudgeonly response is 
avoid the inspiration trap. If, you're, if your issue is, why don't I feel excited about everything I'm doing? The answer is because you're a human being. And that's just what work is. I don't care who you grab, the most inspired, artistic, creative novelist. I'll tell you what, 95% of their time, they're cursing their copy of Scrivener and wishing they had gone into accounting. There is no job in which you're going to love what you're doing in every moment. That's not the game here. All right, so two and three, let's say that's not the issue, only partial issue. Two and three is two. You can get more autonomy and maybe get around that demotivation, but autonomy is very valuable. So what's your account balance you have to invest in that autonomy? And the, and the, the currency in that account is skill. So focus on getting really good. And three, if you're doing lifestyle-centered career planning, you know exactly what, what you're doing today is serving for three years from now. Makes it more manageable. Thank you.